overflows. This respect of woman leads to misery. Sanatan culture says where women are honored, divinity blossoms there. And wherever women are dishonored, all actions, no matter how noble it may be, remains unfruitful. By the word woman is meant the feminine qualities. The word is not only used for gender. Instead, woman refers to intrinsic feminine qualities. In the process of transformation, the first requirement is freedom from gender distinctions. Where one attains to, when one attains to awakening, he is neither male nor female, instead just a Buddha. It is an altogether different matter that there are masculine qualities and also feminine qualities. These qualities define human nature. Awakening implies the inner man and inner woman neutralize one another. And awakening is the transcendence beyond the two, the light beyond duality of male and female. When a man attains to Buddhahood, feminine qualities of compassion, etc. develop in him. He looks more a feminine. Buddha looks more feminine. His behavior is full of compassion, tenderness, love and care. When Lalna of Kashmir became enlightened, she looks more masculine. Therefore, when a woman attains to Buddhahood, she develops masculine quality like firmness of decision, courage, etc. But a true awakened one is someone freed of his or her self and the whole universe. Such is not the case with Abrahamic religion. In Christian Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Ghost, there is no place for women as gender as well as feminine qualities. I am reminded that when God first created the world, he created man and woman from the mud and then breathed life into them. He created them equal, but looking at the world, you can understand whatsoever has, whosoever has created it is a little stupid. He created man and woman and made a small bed for them to sleep in. The bed was so small that only one person could sleep on it. They were equal, but the woman insisted she would be on the bed and he should sleep on the floor. The problem was same with the man. He was not willing to sleep on the floor, you will be surprised to know that first night in existence was the beginning of pillow fight. They had to go to God and the solution was very simple, just make a king size bed. Any carpenter could, do, could have done this. But God is a man and is as prejudiced as any other man. He demolished the woman, destroyed her, and then he created Eve. But now woman was no longer equal to man. She was created from one of the Adam's ribs. So she was just to serve man, to take care of him, to be used by man. This is Christian story. Christians do not tell you the entire story. They start their story from Adam and Eve, 
but Eve is already reduced to a state of slavery. And since that day, women has lived in slavery in thousands of ways. Financially, she has not been allowed to be independent. Educationally, she has not been allowed to be equal to men because then she could be financially independent. Religiously, she has not been allowed even to read the scriptures or listen to somebody else reading the scripture. Women's wings have been cut in many ways. In certain religions, women are not allowed to stand in prayer along with men, whether it is Jews religion or Islam. And the greatest harm that has been done to her is marriage, because neither man nor woman is monogamous. Psychologically, both man and woman are polygamous. So their whole psychology has been forced against its own nature. And because woman was dependent on man, she had to suffer all kinds of insults because man was the master, he was the owner, he had all the money. To satisfy his polygamous nature, man created prostitutes. Prostitutes are byproduct of marriage. And this ugly institution of prostitution will not disappear from the world unless marriage disappears. It is its shadow because man does not want to be tied to monogamous relationship and he has the freedom of movement, he has money, he has the education, he has all the power. He invented prostitutes and to destroy a woman by making her prostitute is the ugliest murder you can do. The strange fact is all the religions are against prostitution while they are the are the cause of it. They are all for marriage and they cannot see the simple fact that prostitution came into existence with marriage. Unless marriage stays, prostitution stays. Enough for now.